hustle nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, nah, my dad walk on. Man, hey, man, we got a special guest in here today, man. He, he really don't need no introduction, man. This guy here is, is here by way of uh, California, man. Mm -hmm. I told him, Mark. Compton, California. You want me to say that? You got to say that. <laughs> Compton, California is in the building. He's Thank representing. You, All right. <laughs> Get it right. Let's get it right. Yeah. Hey, man. So, hey, man. How you doing today, man? Man, I'm, st I'm glad to be here. Man, we thank yeah. you for coming all the way this way, man. Yes, sir. Man, so so uh, just, uh, you know, uh, we always go back, man. So we're going to start off uh, just in the early stages of who you are. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Like, um, you say Bumpton. That's what they say. Compton right. or Bumpton? Uh, Bumpton, California. And we, like Melvin say, it ain't set tripping, we set trends. And when you say bombed in California, a lot of people think about uh, gang banging or this. Compton, California is the first black run city west of the Mississippi's. Okay. Uh, when they was calling DC Chocolate City, we was Chocolate City. Okay. Because right, I never heard of Bompton before. You never heard of Never. Compton. If, if I know, so Compton is just, you. You just named it that. So there is no place that really named Bompton. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. It's Black Town. Oh, okay. Okay. So now you. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard. Who of named it, it Bompton? Um, God oh. did. Like, uh, it was just anointed that. I mean, you you never heard of Chocolate City? Yeah. So that's Washington D.C., right? Uh huh. So you heard of that? Yes. So just because you didn't hear it, don't make it any. It's not true, right? That's true. Okay. So it's a lot of things you heard of. <laughs> we'd, have, we'd have another Mount Everest with the stuff that you ain't heard of. You that's true. That's so, true. So yeah, you ain't really ever been to Bompton, so no. you you gotta come. Okay, definitely will. So it was, you know, it, we call it Bompton because uh, the Compton. Uh, referred to the Ku Klux Klan, uh, the founding fathers of Compton, California, the pilgrims that came there. And uh, uh, like I said, I, I was raised on Elm Street. And, and that's where you were born as well? Yes. Born and raised? Okay. On, on, on Elm Street. And mm -hmm. uh, as we as we say it, we ran Freddy Cougar out, off of Elm Street. So mm. that's where the nightmare came from. Oh, okay. We moved, we moved them crackers east. Okay, <laughs> you know okay. Wow. So... Yes. Uh, so tell us how was it um, like growing up there as uh, a kid? Growing up, like, did you have brothers and sisters? Yes. How brothers. many brothers? How many sisters? I got oh, a brother and a sister. One brother. Are you the eldest? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So big bro. Big. Bro. So you had to lead the way. Be, lead the know, example. I don't know if I did all that. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. You was there. Yeah. Okay. So we we grew up um, uh, the average black family. Not the average black family. My father was a homeowner. Mm. Uh, first houses on Elm Street. So you were raised with your mom and dad. Yes. Okay. Because yes. uh, you know, average family nowadays is like single, single yeah, mom that's home that, and stuff. That's, right. I mean, that's that's the economical forte for uh, exclusion of the black race. Right. So yeah, through uh, you know that came up through the thirties and mm -hmm. it, it disseminated all the way through. But in Compton, when I grew up in Compton, it was the city of no smog because of the atmosphere. They call Compton the hub city. So mm -hmm. we're in the middle of everything. Anaheim, Orange County, the Valley. So the hub city with the uh, air coming from the south, the beach, the salt water air, and the mountain air from the Santa Ana winds comes into the middle and it connects in Compton. And it, it's a natural purification. You know, when you drink your bottled water, when you hear about the artesian wells and you see all those pretty mountains, Artesia, California, we had the first 21 artesian wells that we sell white folks they water. Mm. Wow. You know, but wow. all the knowledge that you have about California, because as a child, because, you know, most kids don't care about the city that they grow up in. It, they don't go researching. It, they just live in. They just want to. It's all about them. So but, but how it, were you as that child? Were you always this way or? Uh, we grew up this way. I mean, it, it just it this uh, inconsistency didn't happen to the dispensation of maybe the 80s babies. Mm. You know, we grew up having knowledge of what our city was and what our city was about. 
Oh, okay. You know, because and that's because of your parents passing that inf- that knowledge down to you. Heck, you no, know, my mama them didn't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> my mama was from Mississippi. She's the only child, graduated from college. My daddy brought her to California. And she, she thought she was the queen of Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, no. Um, in my era, we were adventurous. Okay. Like um, Compton was a country. You know, like like Texas now, we had horses and cows. We used to steal the uh, L.A. Dodgers. The L.A. Dodgers stayed at Richland Farms. And we used to steal their horses at 6 o'clock in the morning and ride all the way to Disneyland. Mm. Bareback. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So we, were, we didn't call it stealing at that time. We would just, you know, needed, you a, we needed a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So when you think about, you know, because I, I, I told her, uh, Marv is the name that that you are called, but when you think about Marvin Earl Kinsey, how did no, that? No, I don't know where y'all get this Earl from. <laughs> my name ain't no damn Earl. <laughs> you know, Marvin this, Kinsey. Okay. So but, where, how, where, how does that transformation happen for us uh, to Atola Marv? Atola. Uh, well, let's go back to who Marvin Kinsey was. Okay. Who Marvin Kinsey. And is. add one more name to that because I see on your social media what else you say? have Kahil Ayat. K- uh, Khalil. Khalil, sorry. Khalil. You messed it all up. Yeah, Khalil Hayat. Ayat. Ayat. Ayat is the Asura in a, like in the Bible, a verse. Uh, instead of a verse in the Quran, it's, it's Ayat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, my youngest son's name is Khalil. Mm-hmm. And I just use Khalil Ayat. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, cool. So why the change with all of these different names? You are going into that story. I ain't got no all different name. My name no, is still it's Marvin. Marvin, and then now you have that's a title, I- Ayatollah. Oh, okay, so tell me about that title. That title, um, well, how the title came about mm-hmm. is, uh, matter of fact, it was right here in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a, a well, I was on the verge of being arrested in Houston, Texas. Okay, and um, I got away from the police and my attorneys put me on a, a plane to go back to California but the, the police had um, uh, told L- LA that I was on my way to uh, California so my attorneys had me took me to uh, Hobby Air, Air, Airport mm-hmm. and sent me to Las Vegas so at the at this time, this 1978-79, the Ayatollah Khomeini had had um, 143 passengers on the passenger plane, Americans, and demanded that America give them 40 billion dollars. You know, mm-hmm. so I, the Ayatollah had America uh, as, as hostage. So when I went to went to uh, Texas, I mean, when I left Texas and went to um, to Las Vegas, they had the in the casinos. They had these papers like, you came to uh, Texas, took a took America, uh, took Texas. I mean, took Las Vegas by storm, and it's a warning poster on there. So I wrote a letter. I, I got one of these posters and sent it to the prosecutor in Houston, Texas. Right? Mm-hmm. I told him. I, I said. Uh, Marv, I was marvelous, Marv. Then marvelous, Marv <laughs> uh, took Texas by storm, wanted dead or alive, right? And I sent it to the prosecutor. So I came back to California. When I came back to California, I end up getting arrested. So I go, I get arrested. I go well, high powers for known gang members. So uh, Doc Holliday, the leader of the BGF, uh, I've been knowing Doc since San, the San Quentin days. Him and Ray Ray Brown and and uh, uh, Stanley Tookie Williams, uh, some of the notables. So when I got to the, the county jail, uh, Doc say, damn, Mar, uh, Texas so damn mad at you. You had, they, they said, yeah, held up like the Ayatollah, nigga, you the Ayatollah. And wow. it just, 1979, it just stuck So, and, and I mean, it's suitable. Uh, Ayatollah means the evidence of Allah, the evidence of God. And like Marvin Sapp said, you never should have made it through the things that I've been through. I mean, with all the time I did in prison, all the time I did, I wasn't the best person. On, I ain't been that bad on the street, but I am. I do kinda, You're not the worst. I, I kind of am. Uh, 
Yes, yeah, so. But I ain't got a gang of hickeys on my head. I ain't got no bullet wounds that you can see. So, I mean, I've had favor. Hey, right. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't never locked up. I ain't never, I've been on these streets. I'm, I'm 71 and I'm still pushing a line. But wow. it's, a, it's in a different line raising my youngsters now. You know, because we got a 30 year gap of black men not relating to black children. And then you come back, half of us were in prison, the other half was on crack, or on some, they weren't just abandoned, but they was kidnapped psychologically. So you have a child like brother just said his father in and out of prison, out of jail, two or three years, it was a gap. If my oldest sons had it depended on me, they'd have been sitting down in the piss. I was in the penitentiary and they see their mother sitting down. So luckily they became men, huh? Mm -hmm. But it had nothing to do with me because I wasn't there. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So we have to accept the responsibility of what happened to us that we allowed to happen and the dispensation between us and our children. Yeah. How can I come back and my son 20, 25 years old and I tell him what to do? Wow. And men don't, and I'm not going to always say men, but a lot of people don't think about those consequences when they're in the trouble before. You know what I mean? It's after when they sit down and they realize, man, I got in trouble and I'm going to miss out on my child being born or I'm going to miss out on how many years. But you know what? You don't think about it before. But the, 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 problem, the problem with that, with a gangster, we're selfish. I never loved nobody more than me. I, when I grew up, I didn't grow up thinking I was going to marry somebody or have kids. Not even your mother? Huh? You didn't love nobody more than Lo you. I, I didn't love nobody more. I thought I loved my mother, but if I had her and respected her, she would not. Have, my mother never been to prison. I tell you, my mother graduated from Jackson State University. Mm -hmm. She came to California. My daddy took care of her. You dig what I'm saying? My father would come home every Friday with flowers and candy. I give to women because my dad gave to my mother. But you can't beat me out of shit because I'm from the street. I'm not my daddy. So you grew up in a, a really good household. Yes. I thought I was Beaver Cleaver. But and you ended up on the street. Everybody do. But let me ask you this, and I want to I wanna skip over what you said when you came back from Texas and you went. When you first got locked up, what was the, what was the turn? What, how much time did you get? My first got locked up? I was nine years old. Wow. For uh, 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 we was me and Mel was talking about that earlier. I was with some of my some of my little cousins, and these boys came. This is in L.A. My uh, uh, my my uh, cousins. We were playing. Some dudes asked us, "Do we want some balls?" So we like, yeah. So they took us to the vault vault ball factory where they make balls at. And put us over the fence, told us, man, just go open the door and y'all can play with all the balls you want, right? So we went in there, we got footballs, we throw it. I got all that shit at home, though. But we just in LA, we playing, they burglarizing the place. We playing, the police come. Wow. Police come, bam, we, we sitting there, we go to jail, Newton Street Jail, right? Wow. We go to jail. I'm so scared to tell my mom, I don't tell them who I am at all. So it's the first time I ever spent the night away from home in my life in juvenile hall. Wow. And then one of our neighbors seen me there and went and told my mom. Mm. You know? And I had the right to remain silent at nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when was the next the next time that you had got No, but before you get into the next time, sorry, babe, they always say that um the reason why you end up on the street or anything like that is because you normally don't have that father figure in your life to try to straight, you know, send you in the right direction. But you still ended up in, on the street, although but, you had a father figure and you got but, in trouble. My, but, but then, then Does again, the environment we, we, have something to do with that? We talk about the gap, okay? My father died when I was 13, okay? So we look at 13. But you got in trouble at nine, first time. Yeah, I was, I was getting, you know, I'm, being a boy, I'm, I'm hustling. We going out the house, riding by, so we, wasn't we weren't territorial when I was growing up. We ride bicycles to Griffin Park. We go and be, we in mischief. You understand? We keeping the crime rate up, hating white folks. I had a, a critical incident with white America at about eight and just changed my life. That's what really changed my life. What happened? Um, you know, at the time, you know, people tell you in California, you ain't never seen no racism. It's no prejudice in California. That's a bullshit. 
We had the Minutemen, we had the Spook Hunters, the John Burke Societies, and these were some real crackers. After seven o'clock, they see blacks walking the street of Compton, they shoot them with BB guns. The niggas is coming, the niggas is coming, right? So we had, they call it Gonzalez Park now. And on Rosecrans, when I grew up, Rosecrans was a two lane street with no sidewalks. We coming from, um, we're coming from the park one day, and we come from the park, never forget to carve a uh, uh, blue and white Crown Victoria. That's why I don't like Fords today. These crackers rolled up. They had their sleeves rolled up, had Lucky Strike, a pack of Lucky Strikes, had the Butch haircuts. And they asked, like, man, where's so Where's Wilmington? And they're like, man, like I tell you now, don't walk up on a car. My brother them like, man, don't walk up on that car. I goes to show them where it was, and they threw eggs and rotten tomatoes on me and laughed about it. Uh, and it hurt my heart. Why would somebody do me like this? Your, your, your parents tell you white people is all right. My mother didn't really say that. She high yellow like you mm -hmm. and from Mississippi. So she hated white folks. <laughs> so I go home. I'm crying eggs, rotten eggs, rotten tomatoes all on me. Everybody said, I told you don't do this. And I get to the house. I'm like, what's wrong with that? Some white people. I told you don't be getting close to white folks. And so me and my crew, after that, I start bringing havoc on white America. My mother go to sleep at night. We would go on, a, on this side of Compton Boulevard where all the white people live and they got in our neighborhoods all the mailboxes are in the in the front door and we go to the front door go get your water hose about 11 o'clock at night put your water hose in your front door turn the water on in the morning your furniture is floating <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah we uh, we go to the dairy go to the dairy and get cow manure get a bag full of cow manure, wrap it up. All white men had uh, um, robes on and with their house shoes. Let my car hit their door and then ding dong, light the thing with some lighter fluid and they come out and step on it and shit go all up their leg. We laugh, have us a good laugh. <laughs> so yeah. that, was, that was our growing, that was how we started. And you know, just putting stuff together. Uh, and our, my little crew, we was called the Blackjack Boys. Wow, you know? so this was before the Bloods or any of that, this was before Yeah, that. this is 1959, 19, so we was called the Blackjack Boys because we were watching a gangster movie and they had to, so we got water hoses and put black tape around it, right? And so I had a little crew, about seven or eight of us, and we'd go out rampage everything, every night. we do, wow. we do go get, we go get uh, some clothes, put hay in the clothes, and all our streets have dips in them, right? And cars ride on the dips. And when uh, your car would come through, we stand behind a bush and throw the um, the dummy out, and you think you didn't hit somebody. So we had all kind of um, stuff going on. That uh, so, so when you when you think of, so after you like I said earlier, when you what was the second time that you ended up being incarcerated? Man. Um, I've been incarcerated so many times, bro. Yeah. Growing so, up, so like, what was it? Well, I get it. Like, I, I make it easier for you. What was the longest stretch? What something that shocked you and like, dang, that's a lot. Uh, well, my the first my uh, my first incident in juvenile hall did four months. Then I did nine months, and then I was out like sixty nine days and caught a murder robbery. Okay. Um, me and my crime partners, and intentional, what an accident. White America. Wow. You know, and um, end up doing 15 years. Okay. You know, so um, from 17 to about 27. Wow. You know, uh, grew up in. I'm I'm the first youth to ever. I, I caught a case in uh, Ontario YTS and Youth Authority. Okay. And uh, a die. Uh, uh, got convicted and I went f straight from Youth Authority to San Quentin. Wow. Nobody, ain't nobody do that. You gotta go through Tracy, Tehachapi, yeah. Soledad, that I went straight to the Adjustment Center. Wow. You know? So they sent me there to kill me, but God said no. Hey. <laughs> you know? So when you, when you think about um, growing up, because I, I, Kendrick Lamar and all the rap artists did, we, we was talking earlier off the, uh, behind the scenes and, and how did you end up, just give me the story on Kendrick Lamar, knowing him and, and meeting, you know, seeing him growing up. Uh, K 
Kendrick was a, 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 a brother. He, he had moved uh, from Watts and his family moved across the street from us. He was a mild-mannered young dude, you know, really stayed to himself. And I used to, you know, pick him up, be interacted with him and never knew he had a talent because yeah. he didn't walk around with a rap book or always rapping. He's just like low profile, like mild-mannered as, as he is now. And um I remember one day I had an artist, uh, Tony Hustle, we was on Warner Brothers, and we go to a, uh, uh, um, a, uh, a celebrity party, and we go in there, and, and J-Rock was there, J-Rock from Watts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And J-Rock just got put on Warner Brothers. And I see Kendrick, I'm like, hey, Kendrick, what's up? I think he's in the entourage with J-Rock, right? So we go on, I see him a couple of more times on stage when Game Ned did a thing with J-Rock. I see Kendrick on the stage, so I'm thinking he a bouncer boy, right? I go to uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Somebody call me like, hey, Mar, you know the little dude stay across the street from you? I'm like, who? Kendrick. I'm like, yeah. He said, man, he on Source Magazine. I said, who he kill? He's like, man, no, then go see, go in there and see him with Dr. Dre. I'm like, what? I didn't even know this dude could rap. Wow, a <laughs> dope know? story, man. Did you ever talk to him after that? Yeah, I saw him. I'm like, you know, you can't ask to get on when you miss the, miss the boat. <laughs> He's a little homie, you know what I'm saying? But everybody wants, now you want to claim him. And Shook had action at him, but he didn't think he was worth it. Wow. So all the dudes that had action, now they all crying. When he moved from my, his, uh, his mother didn't move from my, that well, where I grew up, it was treetops. We 1950. My my cousin tell me, nigga, you all are not no uh, black uh, blackjack boys. This is treetops <laughs> because all our streets are named after trees. Mm -hmm. okay. Elm Street, Spruce Street, Maple Street, Magnolia Street, Palmer Street. All our streets are trees. Okay. So that's the treetops. Mm -hmm. So in 1959, I became a treetop. Wow. And treetops went from central to Compton Boulevard, to Rosecrans, to the canal. We had a canal running from one side to the other. And Elm Street had the bridge. And when I get in my teens, we ran the bridge. If you wanted to go across our bridge, the Canal Boys Bridge, you had to pay a quarter or fight somebody. Wow. If not, you had to walk all the way around to go downtown, you know? Well, let me ask you this. I seen you on a picture with Dre. Um, how, did, how, how, did, how was you in his relationship? Dr. We got, Dr. Dre, I yeah, mean, just, I just seen you on the picture. How did that end up happening? Uh, we don't have a relationship. You know, it ain't like me and him cool. Or, I, yeah. mean, I mean, we 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 coolest, but I had to give bro props. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, when he made the deal uh, with Apple, and he became the first black billionaire of the city of Compton, right? So um, before this... Uh, I had asked, the, the new mayor had came in, uh, Kendrick was on, Problem was on, uh, DJ Quick, we got some amazing dudes out of our 10 square miles. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we had more blacks going to the Olympics at a time than any state. You know what I'm saying? It's great things happen out of Compton, California. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I approached the mayor, who was Asia Brown at the time, and uh, uh, asked him like, man, we need to, um, you know, give something for the rappers. Uh, you know, uh, uh, NWA made gangster rap. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, Compton do some shit, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, we don't want we don't want Compton to go in that direction. We trying to change, we don't want to get rid of the gangster. So when Dre got the, got the money, they start asking Dre. Dre wasn't accepting no calls. So I went in myself with my own money and I, made June 19th, you know, most kids don't know what Juneteenth is. Mm -hmm. So I made Juneteenth in the city of Compton, Dre Day. Wow. So I put on a festival, I gave them a, a hood pass and it's I got a got a plaque with all the freeways on the side and all the original OGs from Compton, California, give them a pass. I had some scrolls made and everybody from all the schools signed them and gave them That's to dope. them. Had some shirts made, you wow. understand me, uh, Dre Day. You wow, know, Dr. Dre. So you give homage to. We ain't got to kiss and hug and this and right. that. But it's you some things homage. you just got to do. That's I mean, it. why you do that? He a crip. He did this. He's an artist. He's a black artist. 
Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And he's doing things, you know, that's why I have, why I'm here, because it's a lot of people say stuff about California that have no relevance. Okay. You, you just looking over here, you don't know what we didn't really did. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, like when you, uh, you, you spoke earlier and you had, uh, you, you mentioned Suge Knight. Being in California as long as you've been, did you ever have any actions with uh, Suge Knight? I was, I was there when Suge uh, ran over Terry. Okay. Uh, um, you, I was, v I've been in, very involved with Suge. Okay. You know, uh, even before when I got out of prison in '95, um, we did the original security for uh, for Tupac. Okay. And uh, when he did Gridlock, mm -hmm. I and, remember that. And we we worked with him in the Nation of Islam. Worked with Pac until Suge made the uh, disastrous decision to hire the police. Yeah. Okay. And, and why Why do you say the disastrous decision? Because everything went bad after that. What went good? I mean, when he was with the nation, wasn't shit happening. Pac didn't deal with no police. Okay. And he don't like. He didn't like police. So if you listen to interviews, the only two people that really dealt with Pac one on one was Frank Alexander and Michael Moore. Michael Moore is a fireman out of Long Beach. Frank was an ex seal or this and this and this and that. So after the disaster that happened in Las Vegas, the only two that opposed anything that the common story was, the truth wasn't told, but the only people that were telling the truth, both of them end up dead. Mm. How'd that happen? Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you got all the rest of these suckers that's telling the story, they lie, they kicking it. You know, but that ain't the truth, mm. you know? Now, that's just my little bitty opinion. <laughs> but I was there. Hey. But what happened why Suge switched from the nation to the police? He was manipulated. But when you see, well, I only know him from, you know, the stories or from the TV shows and so forth. Mm -hmm. And when you see him, he doesn't seem like the type of person who is, you know, easily manipulated. You don't think so, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, don't think so. you're like, I don't really know him. So, I mean, just looking at him, just looking. here's a man with $146 million, mm -hmm. end up going to prison. Now he got 25 years. You think he ain't easily manipulated? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, Suge is a, uh, me and Melvin was talking about it today. Suge is the only one that he ain't even a gangster, ain't ratted on nobody. Everybody rats on him. They talk shit about Suge, but how many interviews you ever heard of Suge accusing anybody of anything? None. He didn't kept it. He wouldn't even be in prison if he had followed my instruction that day that that incident happened. But he wanted to keep it 100. And that 100 got him 25 years. Mm. Wow. I got him the, the interview that, uh, with Melvin. Me and Melvin did with, uh, um, what's the girl? Uh, Solidad O'Brien and Ice Cube mm -hmm. did a thing on 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 Suge. Kill Baby Paul Small Tupac. And five. so uh, I was able to get an interview with Suge to to a telephone interview, you know. So you know I didn't help dude out way more than he didn't help me out, mm -hmm. you know. But the hype, you know, what I'm saying he keeps feeding into the hype, you know what I'm saying. So. Yeah, when you, you, you talk about some people and the way he had good intentions, but good intentions is full in the graveyard huh, if you don't make them right. Huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you try to save people that don't want to save themselves. Correct. So when he got into the industry, the industry wanted Don Cornelius to mentor him, to select his friends. But he wanted to deal with the mob. He wanted to deal with the homies. He took crackheads and, and made them somebody else. And when the money ran out, the crackheads ran out on him. Wow. White America don't say nothing about Suge. They make black people talk about Suge, mm -hmm. as they do with everybody else. You know? Mm, good stuff. Man, I, I just, I, I think about the, the, the times when he had uh, Death Row and all that. Man, that was the time when Man. The, the whole hip-hop scene was actually uh, being really maneuvered by, by, by him and Jimmy Iovine, them, to be honest with you. And, and that was a time when they had everything, pretty much, they had everything where they wanted it. They had the money, they had the power, they had the success, 
that the, the American dream, so called. So um, when you think about that, I just to see it all dwindle away like it did was pretty. Uh, it was drastic for uh, for for, our, for for the culture. That's right. They say a money and fools soon part. Yeah, yeah. You know. So we had all the opportunity. We suggested that do get a factory over on Walnut, right next to the 91 freeway, have death row Compton. Mm -hmm. But you have, out of this whole thing, you have no edifice of death row in Compton. Ain't that sad? Wow. You know, you spent all that money in Beverly Hills, you spent all that money somewhere else, and they didn't tore everything down that you ever, you just rented it. Wow. <laughs> 50, wow. $60,000 a month for some people that don't even like you when you could have built your own mansion in your city. Mm-hmm. Wow. But white America don't allow you to do anything like that. You can invest with the March of Dimes or, or, or Jerry's kids, but you can't invest with black folks. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's been a manipulation, and we, we didn't went to sleep on it. Now things have got so bad. Yeah. It's just like the, the gang culture. Piru is a culture. It's a street in Compton that just wasn't allowing dudes to just come in just because we live in houses with, with, with families. You can't take our coats. You can't take our shoes. We can fight too. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it was a defense mechanism and the defense mechanism went so bad, we turned into the savages that we were fighting against. Wow. So now you can't tell the difference. Let me ask you this. You and uh, you and Melvin, y'all y'all roll together. Being a cat from... Texas, you know, when you see that, you think about Crips and Bloods. How did you guys end up being, you know, uh, you know, being, you know, linking up and everything? Because mutually, Melvin has a, a, a genuine insight for in bettering black people. And I don't say I can in better anybody. And Reno, say I, that because he's he formerly was Crip, you formerly was Blood. Ain't, yeah, he. Crip, he's a Crip. I know I'm a Piru. Piru. It's different. Okay, I don't What's know the, the difference. What's the difference between uh, Piru and Blood? Blood's rule the streets of L.A. Piru's the world. Mathematically, Pi R factor. <laughs> okay. So how do you guys end up linking together? How do you end up? Uh, uh, Captain Shahid had asked me to do a speaking engagement. I had seen, Mel I guess, when Melvin first got out, he did a, a, a book sign. I guess, man, when was that first slave ship? 97 after I got out on the right. So I, I went down to this. I'm kind of black culture, you know, I'm still got the spirit. So uh, I go down there and he was, and I bought one of his books. You know, I bought the book, came home and read it. Then, shoot, like five years, it was about five years ago, we met again at uh, um, Inglewood High School to uh, uh, talk to some gang members. And we were talking, his his partner brought him, I came with Captain Shahid, and we got to discussing and this and this and that. And I'm like, hey, bro, yeah, I, I know you. I said, man, I bought your book. Wow. And so that's, we, you know. So y'all never seen each other or knew each other before that? No. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. No, it ain't crazy. He's I mean, from I mean, L.A., I'm from Compton. Okay, so y'all don't, don't no. never cross paths. It's a big place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but. Okay, we Would have you, an age difference too. Correct. So when he was when when he started doing what he was doing, I was already in prison. Okay. I know some of the OG homeboys, and when he was like seven, eight, nine, well, not seven, eight, nine, because he's he started when he was like three. I think. He was just kind of <laughs> <being badass. laughs> so, <laughs> so at the end of the day, being that you guys represent two different uh, parts of, of the gangs. When people seen you guys together, when you would do different things together, did it help the the gang culture in California? No, no, not at all. No. How do we? How how can we? How do we make a better way? Like the gap that you was talking about bridging, uh, for you know, like when you came home and everything was kind of in a disarray. How do you? How do you pretty much uh, bridge those gaps for our youth for the? Bro, I don't know. <laughs> Don't give me the line. I can, because, yeah. I can tell you all That's these glass. Yeah. I can tell you all these uh, uh, poetic theories that I have. Yeah, but it's just like me and Melvin was talking earlier about these. It changed this intervention stuff. 
So we've been doing it. And, uh, and then when you turn to intervention, th these nonprofits, when you do a nonprofit and it starts working, the government take it over and they start running your shit. Now you're just on a payroll. So now your whole complexion or intervention, we've been having intervention for 20 years. It ain't stopped no murders. Wow. You know, but we got some dudes doing like, you know, like I hear dudes talking about, yeah, fuck big you, fuck this and this. And can you cuss on air? Um, you already did. Did I? No. <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> so, but you looking at a dude, and, and, I, and I don't know you personally, but I know his work now. You know what I'm saying? The things that he's doing and the things that he's doing. This dude with his own money took a hundred black kids that had never had suits or nothing but tennis shoes on, bought them tuxedos, took them to dinner. They didn't know what a fork spoon was from a salad fork or this and that. He set them down and did something. Do you know how that impacted them mm -hmm. kids life? You can give a nigga a book bag and this and that. Yo, give him some drawers and some socks. That's what he need. You know what I'm saying? So when you do uh, Roland Curtis, the 30s, the feds had to come get them because them dudes start buying houses in the neighborhood to keep the Mexicans from buying them. And they start having, to, you had a problem with them, they would have the crackheads come cut your lawn. Every Tuesday, they would take out your trash. Now they became friends to the old people. Now the old people wasn't writing on them no more, so the LAPD had them all indicted and sent them to the feds. Mm. Wow. One of one of my uh, one of um uh um Melvin's uh, OG homies, Michael Conception. Y'all probably heard of Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got he got the Michael Conception Foundation. So it's dudes that's doing stuff, you know, that ain't televised. So maybe we did come up doing some crazy stuff, but we had no guidance. Your mother wasn't able to give you $100,000 and let you, you had to do this by hands on, trial and error. We didn't know nothing about money. You know what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, when I grew up, it was a thing called the millionaire in the 50s. And my mother and my grandmother used to watch it every day. A man would come up in a long limousine and he would pass out a check for a million dollars. And my mother said, Miss Pearl, if we had a million dollars, we'd be rich for the rest of our life. She said, Marvin, go sit on the porch and see if you see the millionaire. <laughs> I'd be sitting at my partner's car. I can't go nowhere right now. I'm waiting for the millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so in knowing that, it kept in my mind. In 1978, I spent $1.5 million in nine months. Wow. By 1980, I was broke in the penitentiary for 10 years. Wow. Right now, if you have a million dollars and start off on Wilshire and Crenshaw, by the time you get to Wilshire and Cannon, you broke. You owe somebody some money. Wow. So you can spend a million dollars now, today, in a day. Yeah. In the fifties, they said it was a lifetime. <laughs> so do you do you uh when you look at um just uh the way that um different things are happening as far as the the music industry and the things that influence our uh youth, um where, where is is there any any hope for the for the future? It's, it's, that's why rap music is so controlled. We was in my uh, my artist had a record. It says she's a virgin too, and he's talking about all these exotic girls. Just because they wear this lavish, they not hoes. You know what I'm saying? Warner Brothers told him he couldn't put that record out because it was too enticing to elevate black women. Wow. They didn't say that. But they said, their, their quote was, we don't want any music over a first fourth grade mentality. Wow. And you look at rap music, ain't none of it elevated. All your conscious rap is over. Wow. Mm. All the rap is bullshit today. Wow. A fourth grade mentality. Wow. Grown people don't talk. You why we can't remember raps? Because we didn't left that mentality. You have to have a room temperature IQ to know a rap record today. Wow. So do you, how do we, how do we reach the youth who are caught up in, in the situation with rap and just the way that things are articulating through our youth today? It's just like what I do every day. I don't preach. I walk the walk. I show youngsters that I'm a homeowner. Got my own car. Don't make me know. And I, all the time I did it in prison when I shouldn't have made it. 
when I was Sherman Marv, when I was the massacre, now I turn around, but everybody didn't get that kind of blessing. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So it's not about, well, man, you got a testimony. Go, going to prison is just like flunking the third grade 20 times. Wow. It ain't no bad, because I gave up on life. The testimony is somebody that stayed on the street, got married, stayed in the neighborhood, and never ratted on nobody, and still legitimate. That's a, how did you grow up in Compton and never go to jail? Wow. And you still good with the homeboys. Kendrick is a little dude, he was relevant in the neighborhood. Wow. He, I found out from Shorty Bang, he was rapping with them, Young Piranha, all of these, him, Problem, all of these dudes was like straight little gang members. What about, y, what what about YG? YG was not in the mix of that? Well, YG is actually from uh, Paramount. Okay. His aunt stayed in uh, Treetops, but okay. see, these people need labels. Okay. Not, not taking nothing away from YG, you know, but he didn't go to our schools. Okay. He didn't hang in our neighborhoods. He just repped it. Kind of like, you know. Yeah, on the music. Yeah. But then they ain't giving back. Wow. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to get somebody some guns and shit, you ain't helping your neighborhood. Yeah. All this, all these dudes that's claiming Pyru, uh, Chris Brown, all of these other dudes that using the label and not one studio for people to go do rap at, but you'll spend $25,000 in a strip club. I mean, we getting used, not used, misused. Wow. How you use, you can't use a cracker's name and they don't get paid for it, huh? So how you use Pyru? How do you use Compton and you ain't been there? Nigga, check in. Let me ask you this. So with everything that you've seen, you, you're 71? Yeah. And you've seen this whole thing evolve from to what it is today. Um, do you are, you, are you okay with where it's at? Or do you feel like it should be, we should be in a better state? Or as far as the gang violence and the stuff that happened with the, guys who are still out there today active. And you ask me, could you repeat that? I'm just question? saying, do you, how, how do you feel about where it is today? I feel, I feel miserably sad that in 50 years of being active, that we have nothing to show for it. We didn't went backwards. Wow. When it was just pyros and everybody knew where they buried the dog in the backyard and now we got all these people coming from other places claiming and you have nothing. That's a business that failed, huh? Wow, yeah. So for me to see these youngsters claiming something, and we got a battle right now with Fruit Town and Treetops. Pyrus will kill another Pyru before they'll kill a Crip. Wow. You can't even go to a function and these two get together and this, what happened, most of these dudes weren't even born when this, this, this uh, mis, mishap happened. But they repping something because he said it. Because she said, well, we, ain't, we don't fuck with them. We don't do this. Like, why? They right across the street from each other. You got family members that's related. We all related some kind wow. of way. You know Crazy. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, uh, uh, it's just different from what we do in the South, of course. But just to see that, my cousin, they, they're definitely, I've, I've taken her over there in, in, off Crenshaw. You remember I took your Uncle James house? Mm -hmm. Been there all their life. 70 years. My Uncle James used to have... Fish and, fish and chip or whatever down in, in, in all the restaurants. He had a bunch of them. And Sears uh, Shoe Repair downtown. And um, basically, man, I seen it. And I would see the way they were when they would come, you know, to Texas. And it was just a different different mindset on life. You know what I mean? Right. A little bit faster, of course, because country laid back. But still, you know, because you got killings everywhere. But it's just the strategic way it's done up there versus the way it's done here. But see, you got to understand, Texas is just Texas. You see, y'all in Texas. And y'all do Texas stuff. Correct. California is a transit state. Everybody can't make it in Texas, they try to come to California to do better. As they come to Hollywood, they come in and get turned out, and now they bitter, but they can't come back home. Huh? Yeah. So they bring their culture and bring their misery to our state. You, you feel what I'm saying? I get it. And, and so you got all of these people that come from all over the world, all over from Louisiana, Mississippi, that came there, that want to be rappers, want to be movie stars, go downtown and get robbed, took all their money. They too embarrassed to ask their mama, can you send for me? And they live on the street. All you have freak accidents like Jamie Foxx who come and put a staple who out of Terrell, Texas, 
who get that respect and put that work in to where he's recognized in California right now. Oh yeah, them you know movie stars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but he ain't been to Compton still. He don't come to Compton. No, Jamie ain't been to Compton. Uh, I know I don't know the, the demographics like that. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. <laughs> so when you when you look at it though, and then now vice versa, just to stand up for the fact that Texas is where our neighbors just moved from California for a better. You know, because of the finances and the way the and, cost and, of living and, uh, here. Okay, and they are runaways. Is that what they, y'all call they, them? They run. If you can't make it in Cali, you can't make it nowhere. Well, I'm coming here. This is cheaper. Well, the same two dollars that you make in here, the twenty dollars you make in there, but you're paying four thousand dollars a month for rent. Here, it's eight hundred dollars a month. So if you couldn't manage that money that you was making paying the four thousand dollars, eventually, because now. Here it is again. A lot of people come to Texas, and a lot of people come back to Cali. Mm, yeah, I, I would. I would say, I can't say the the transition. I don't. I don't know the people as far as that. Then yeah, back, mean, but you know, I, the ones that I'm dealing with now that are here was actually had a few over last yeah, night. I, matter, matter of fact, I got one of my, my crime partner. He down one, here. Yeah, he he. You know, we started selling PCP in Texas, in Houston, and we went to prison, went to Huntsville, and he's in Arlington right now. Got a big old pretty house, you know, that would have been two million dollars in California. Correct. correct. And he's a truck driver, and he drives, but he liked this laid back. Yeah, yeah, correct. You, you dig what I'm saying? I'm Cali. But my Mar uncle, my uncle went up there, and he did pretty good. So it's just different strokes for different folks. You yeah. know what I mean? Because my uncle ain't never left, and it, he, she see him at his shop when we go up there. So he just never, yeah. So he I never mean, that, came that's back. That's the only thing. There's some people that, you know, you can go anywhere and make it sometime, but it's just like you know what we talk about America. We got a gang of people coming to America, but ain't many of us leaving. <laughs> Correct. You know what I'm saying? We ain't trying to go to Africa and live. If they gave me a boat, shit, I'd sell it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to Africa. No, hell, the Africans ain't doing good. Wow. You know, you look at a, a, a country that 80% of you are the population and 20% of the other, and you don't run your own gold, you don't have your own ore, you don't carry with your diamonds, and you still got five wives with a hut that don't even have a door on it. You know, so... You ain't doing that. We all we got microwaves, sixty inch screen TVs in California, and they own food stamps. <laughs> wow! So um, when you look at because Hollywood actually Atlanta's doing real good with 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 the I, we went down by the Tyler Perry studio. They doing their own. They 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 call it like a, a small Hollywood down there. Okay. Um, do you see the opportunities changing the way that technology and the way things have moved now? In in technology and and like you say. The 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 relevant the relevance of the South is that y'all still holding a black base. We lost our toehold in California. You know what I'm saying? We we're damn near invisible. We don't wow. know who we are. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So we don't have that camaraderie. Atlanta's doing it, but still and all, these crackers still running y'all. Correct. You, but you, know, you, you got you got a problem right now with the abortion shot. You got a problem with uh, the voting, you know what I'm saying? So all these big things you're doing for the the real stuff that's that's causing your life, y'all ain't acting on it. You, you feel what I'm saying? So uh, this crack is still controlling the mouth of the South. Is still like you. That's what I learned when it, the first place I ever been out of state from from San Quentin on my first trip. 1977 was Houston, Texas. Okay. And I thought it was Griffin Park. I had never seen that many trees and that much quiet. Yeah. And when I got here, I learned something I never knew before. I grew up seeing the racists and the, the, the prejudice and the dogs. And man, I would never go to the South. But I found out that there was a difference between racism and prejudice. You have a right to have a prejudice. I don't like stupid people. That's my right. Keep it to myself. So white people in the South, if they don't want blacks to do something, they just make this for you. <laughs> Go, you can't come on Post River Oaks, so we're going to make Bel Air for you. In California, they just start redlining you. <laughs> like, nigga, you can't, you're going to come shop here, but you can't stay here. Man. So I learned the difference between racism and prejudice. Or uh, They say uh, a white man speaks with forked tongue. 
You ever thought about why they call California Southern California? We're on the West Coast. Why? Because every peck of wood that didn't want integration, they came to California and started making laws and started being judges, and they invented racism. Wow. So that's the mouth of the South. Wow. Southern California. Wow. So, um, yeah, man, I, I tell you, man, we love you, brother, and, and just for, for sharing with us, man, I, I, I know this won't be the last time we coming up to Cali again. I'm going to get to talk to you often, to be honest with you. I'm going to try to if you have me. Man, shut up. <laughs> you know old people love to talk. <laughs> But yeah, like I, I know last time we was up there, man, and just being able to uh, just the, the energy and the way that your, your your character is, man, it was a blessing to be invited in and just the, the love you showed us, you know, just coming over there, you and Mar, you and Melvin and man, I didn't, I didn't forget it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I just you. thank you guys, man. And uh, I'm, hey, man, you you got anything else for Marv, man? Say, man, we love you, brother. All right, y'all tired of me already. No, 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 no. We got some more to do, but just, <laughs> hey, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, man. All right.